Welcome to Rhythm, a podcast on being in balance through conversations with the Swami. Namaste, everybody. Today we are here with Swami Tadananda from the Ramakrishna Vedanta Center here in Auckland. He's back for another episode on um, well being. We will carry on from where we left off last time, and that was on the topic of. Um, disillusionment and depression. Swamiji, how are you? I'm good, Sunil. How are you? Good, thanks. Can you can we please explore this topic? It's, you started off really well um, and, you know, we really intrigued everyone. So let's explore this topic today. Yes. So in this age and time, and especially after COVID, mental well-being is a big issue. And even though it was a sort of a topic of taboo when people were feeling a little down, uh, low, blue under them. But they would not talk about it because it was sort of people not well received and understood. But it has become such a common problem with so many people not being able to manage stress and anxiety uh, and then they have sought medical help and this and that. And the, the number of people in the community is so many that it's now like a common thing and people come in openly say, I'm depressed, I'm on medication and all those things. At least they're open about it. But so it made me think about, is that really everyone is really depressed, that everyone needs to go on their medication? Or they could be some better understanding about what we call depression. So, <clears throat> basic, uh, the way to explore is when we classify somebody who is depressed, we are looking at a symptom. Like somebody goes to a doctor, says this is a symptom, doctor says you're diabetic or hypertensive. In a, likewise, if somebody goes and gives a few symptoms and the doctor classifies you as depressed or something. And, and then some counseling, some psychiatric, uh, if it's available, or then medication comes, which then chemicals are put into your body. Chemicals affect the function of the mind. That low that one felt for the time being is sort of eased off and you feel slightly better. And then when the effect of the medicine weighs off, you are back. You become addicted to the medicine now yes. for your well being. Yes. Okay. And an addiction means, you know, the doses will keep on increasing, things can go worse. So when one is down the spiral, deep, depressed means it has gone down somewhere where somebody else, friends, family members, they can't even reach you and pull you up and help you out. You are in some dark space, painful, confused, all those symptoms are there. Uh, and you also struggle to get out of it. It's like you've fallen in a well, you try to climb out and the gravity pulls you back in again type of thing. And it's dark, it's lonely, it is painful mentally and all that. So this would require counseling and psychiatric treatment and all those things. But as different from these situations or conditions, there are many situations in life where one goes down for a while Life has got its ups and downs. The pendulum swings, happy times, bad times. And and that's all part of what life is. Light and darkness, success and failure, joy and misery. All that's what makes this life. If you had only one, you would not understand the other and appreciate that also. Like you can't appreciate light without having darkness. You can't uh, appreciate happiness without having some misery suffering. They're both teachers and sometimes the suffering is a greater teacher. So we talked about lessons to be learned and changing our perspective to the to, to those challenges that life is throwing, the exercises that it's trying to give and the ultimate goal is to be stronger. Now <clears throat> we talked about this idea of disillusionment. So illusion is when, when somebody is under an illusion, then they are perceiving something which is not there. 
Okay. That means they are in a state of ignorance. In their mental understanding, they are seeing something which they think to be right, to be the reality, while in actual fact it is not. Like somebody going in a desert in a hot day sees an oasis. The perception shows there is an oasis. But the reality is that there is no oasis there. It is an illusion. That's right. And so, in life, all of us or most people have some of these illusions, these classes of ignorance through which they are seeing and in their mind they have this, harbored these illusions about themselves, about the world around them, about people around them, about relationships, so many things. We all live in that world of illusion. And life is being a teacher does its job and those experiences shock us out of those illusions sometimes and that is a jolt to the system because you're, yeah, it, people like to live in a blissful ignorance type of thing you know it's nice they, they've created the world this is beautiful this is beautiful this is beautiful and then suddenly life shows it is not so beautiful as you've been thinking so that's a jolt and there's like a disillusionment happens. It's a painful thing because you're suddenly jolted out of your comfort zone into a new situation we are not familiar with. And and, and that happiness and the joy and thing that you're feeling in the first, in the illusion, the reality uh, brings out something else. And it requires now a readjustment or an acceptance and readjustment. So it's a it's a lesson. Uh, to be learned. Uh, it's better to have a painful awakening to truth than to continue to live in blissful ignorance. That's right. You see, it is better to have a awakening to the truth than to continue to live in blissful ignorance. But the process is not just smooth sailing and that's that disillusionment comes to us again and again and sometimes it might be a small thing and you adjust very quickly and sometimes it could be massive and it shocks you out of your comfort zone or how things have nicely settled and you're going on and and in life and then we're ejected out of it and landed in a new area and there's a struggle to adjust to the acclimatize to the new reality. Let me give you an example that many people would know. And I say, where disillusionment is not bad, actually disillusionment is good. Okay. okay. So we all know this, uh, most of us would know the story of Lord Buddha. Yes. He was a prince, Siddhartha. And his father, parents knew, king knew that... Uh, and the day he confronted the harsh realities of life, this man would leave the, 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 all these princely duties and everything, renounce them, all that. So he designed his lifestyle daily and everything to cut him away from the truths of life. So he created an illusion, which was provided a illusory world in the palace, beautiful wife, child, servants, music, dance, this is what life is. And the child, the young prince grew up. That he was having a beautiful, comfortable time. But that was not the reality. One day he chanced to go outside beyond the walls of the, the kingdom. And he saw things that he was not exposed to. He saw elderly people. He saw death. And when he was confronted with these realities, they were there all the time, but he was not exposed to them. Now he's coming face to face with them. And, and it jolted him out of that comfort zone. Like if it's not happiness, they are, the experience he was having is not everyone's experience. No. Okay. So when he came back home, imagine that young man in that thoughtful mood. You know, everything is still the same as yesterday, but he's not part of it. He's not enjoying the music and the dance and all the entertainment and everything there. You can imagine him seated in some corner, thinking deeply. His parents are saying, what's wrong with him? He's not normal. Normal means 
participating in all these things around. So he's not normal. And then somebody goes and asks some questions and he's bringing these things up like what he saw today and he experienced and he's asking for uh, answers and explanations which were not part of his illusory world before. So that is a disillusionment that happened in him. How we react to that disillusionment makes the difference between people to people. How we respond to that other, not react. And, and, and in terms of relating this to depression, would you say that um, being disillusioned and actually still ignoring things, still yeah. ignoring things, yes. you the, keep on in that low and keep... The mind low. goes down. Yeah. So... What in two things happen in a normal depression? The word depression means depressed. It yeah. mind is sinking down. The mental level, the mental energy has descended down. Uh, we will maybe in another class talk about this mind levels. Right. Okay, and how when it comes down, then it will drop down to the next level, next next level like a ping pong ball dropped at the top of the steps, just goes down, down, down. And this, in another way, the same mind can go up, 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 also. So, in depression, the mind is going down. In the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna is telling Arjuna in chapter 2, my friend, raise your mind. If you can do that, you are your own friend. If you make it go down, you become your own enemy. There's no outside enemy there. Okay. So, in disillusionment, there is a sort of awakening of that buddhi, the enlightenment, the discrimination is there. In buddhi, buddhiman, you know, to be able to descend the effect from fiction, the reality from the delusion type of thing. So it's it's a sharper mind, it's a better mind. And that mind is in play. And that mind is trying to compare these two states. All right, one is the illusory world, which was the experience until now. He has a new experience, which is a reality. The buddhi is the power of discrimination, comparison. It is a comparison. And it is now being forced to discard the illusory one. Okay, the blissful ignorance and to embrace the enlightened perspective of life. And that is good. Yes. It's painful. It's good. So when one has that experience, when when, when somebody is falling for, for sort of feeling a bit low, one should step back and say, why I am feeling this? And if in that un their own personal understanding, oh, it, I was harboring, I uh, living in a particular illusion, a nice illusion made me feel happy and all that. But now I realize it's an illusion. I I'm, I have to shake it off. But I'm a bit unstable right now. I'm not grounded in the new truth. I'm feeling out of sorts. I'm not feeling happy like everyone else. I'm not normal. I'm not able to participate in all the old activities with the same enthusiasm and joy. I can't enjoy the parties or don't do the same thing in with that same zeal and zest and participation. And my friends and people think I'm not normal. Okay, you know, whether well, I should. That's true. Right. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So you're immediately classified. Normal means you are the sheep, uh, you know, in the head, you know. Whether the majority are going, you're following that. Okay. So, but I haven't found my own place to live in my own company or new. So I'm in sort of a bit of a no man's land right now. Yes. And the pull is there always to get into the group, the right. head mentality, the mob. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And sometimes he'll set people in. Others will find a stronger footing and say, I'm better off. I'll drop that off. That is a challenge. Okay. Right. And people go through that. But let's go back to this discrimination between illusion and disillusionment. So disillusionment happens when this higher faculty of buddhi opens in us which is able to discriminate between the right and wrong, higher and lower, impermanent and permanent, trivial and important things in life, and then to relegate the second category as something to be discarded in exchange for something better, superior, higher. There's a transition that happens in, in a little bit of uncertain space, like you're on one step on the stairs, you don't want to climb to the next one. You put one foot on the second one, a higher step. And then you have to do the transference of weight. Yes. And when you your weight is transferred to the, the higher foot, 
then you can ease off your second foot and you can be standing on the next step. But in the transition period, yes. there's a period of instability. I'm yes. not very sure. And the gravity is pulling me downwards. It requires an effort to break free of traditions, cultures, relations. All those things are there. In so many forms, the world is tying us down and dragging us down there. But the soul power is says, free me, let me go. It, it, it responds, I want freedom. So in Buddha's case, okay, so he, imagine a case like that. And many people could be like that. Life has thrown some challenge and the disillusionment. And disillusioned, the response, not the reaction, is what makes the difference. What you get out of that exercise in life. Some will get pulled in. Parents will come and say, this is life. Take it. Be normal. Accept it. Be, But continue here. Be one of us. Or somebody would say, okay, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to attend to this. I'm going to the, the root of things. Find out a solution. Understand, understand deeply. Keep asking. So Buddha is asking, so what is death? Old age. If everything ends up in that way, then what's the meaning and purpose in life? Is there something permanent behind this impermanence? See, those type of, that that event that happened prompted this train of thoughts in there. And it will happen in most people. For a moment, you know, in, your, in a comfort zone, they say you, uh, you realize the unreality of the things. For a split moment, the cloud parts and you get a glimpse of the sun. But sometimes the clouds come back again, block the thing off. Yeah, and for... S- I would say for a lot of people, it would be, uh, yes, um, uh, I was enlightened for a bit there, yeah. but, you know, it's did too not, hard. Too hard, did not know what to do. I'm yeah. just going to go to my comfortable space. Same. Same, same old, to, same old. And uh, and let's see what happens. I'm going to die. Everyone else dies. Yeah. I'm going to die. Again. Yeah. That's fine. Make hay while the sunshine. Yes, yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, let's enjoy as much as possible there. We all die anyway. Yeah. So why ask the next? Yeah. Yeah, so they slip back to that, okay, until another blow comes. Okay, life is a teacher. If you fail once, you'll have to repeat the experience. Another, another painful blow will come until we learn. So, so in Buddha's case, what happened? See, well, that young prince took up this quest and the world got a Buddha. Yeah. Yes. How we respond to it? So in that, there's sacrifice. There's a tremendous search for meaning in truth. There's no compromising with the old way of doing things. Once you have glimpsed the light, you don't want to go and look into the darkness again. So these challenges in life sort of open the cloud for a, push aside the clouds for a while and you see the truth, the bright light. It might dazzle you too much because you're so much used to that living in that low light or darkness. Many people are tuned to looking their own shadow with the light behind them. But if you can turn around and face the light, the source of the light, because it's too strong, too dazzling, okay, the truth is not very, very comfortable for most people. But that's the way to live. You know, the, the, the higher life would be when you are confronting Embracing the truth, no matter how painful it is. So, you can think of so many situations in people's lives where we live under this illusion, especially about things that give us happiness. Money will make me happy. A wife will make me happy. Children will make me happy. Name will make me happy. Fame will make me happy. And all those type of things. And you invest so much time and effort in your life trying to get that because you are and the person is under the illusion that this is the source of happiness. Yes. Tremendous amount of five years, ten years goes. Okay, yes, you get a tidbits of here, there. Maybe not how you initially imagined, but something is better than nothing, you might say. <laughs> this is how it is. Everyone is doing there. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot also. But then at some point, the reality will begin to sink in. It's not really happiness. On the other, it can be extremely painful also. Yes. Those things that gave you so much happiness in the beginning can be a source of even more misery. But you are caught into it. 
that disillusionment is happening because now you're living with the reality of things. And some people, okay, how do you deal with this? Okay. And that's where if your own buddhi and intellect has got some good samskaras from previous lifetime, we've got some good company and people whom we can talk to things who can reorient your perspective of things in a more in the light of knowledge and say, hey, my friend, look at it in this way. Don't blame that other person. The problem is with your own illusion that was there. Take that out, confront reality, and then you become busy with that transformation, a subjective change rather than feeling sad and blaming the world, blaming the environment, blaming other people and things like that for making you miserable type. But if you embrace, life is trying to teach me something. Don't say, why me? Ask the question, where is it taking me? What is it trying to teach me? Let me discern the knowledge out of it. The first step is to change that perspective. Now it's all about growth and development. It's about the lesson to be learned. I will be in a better place hereafter, but I have to go through this process. Accepting the challenge, you know, but I'll be better off. Okay. And embracing that and looking at it in an objective way. What is life trying to teach me? And those people who are involved in that life, in your life, who apparently now have suddenly become a pro cause of problem, you are looking at them as a teacher. You say, hey, such and such a person is going through that painful experience themselves, but they are going to change me. I should be great, grateful to that person. You see the whole, how the whole perspective changes around there because it's now focused not on your growth and development. So, and if you so look at the challenges in life, so now if you go and talk to people, if you're a counselor and say, hey, what are the things that worry you that make you feel low? And then list down 10 things and you discriminate and say, yeah, this is a bit of a depression type of thing. Mind is low in energy. It's not the buddhi firing away. It's actually the buddhi misfiring away. It's not able to lift your mind up. That needs to be taken up. And uh, and if it's very serious, then you might go on the medication type of thing, you know. But the other lot guys uh, who are sort of in a disillus disillusionment category, I would say, you're so lucky. This is the time. This is the time. Life is a great teacher. Okay, see it in this way. Learn from this, my friend. I would rather have you go through this disillusion now, now, disillusion now, than for you to continue in this ignorant state of foolishness and all that and never learn from this life. Yeah, there's no fool like an old fool. So some of the examples, right? So, so in this day and age, right? Mm. Some, what are some of the examples? You mentioned a few. You talked about, you know, um, well, money, uh, relationships uh, and so on so would we say that um, as an example uh, someone someone that has uh, been um, gone through a lot, lot of lot of growth let's say material growth mm -hmm. uh, financially done really well really heavily invested in properties let's say let's let's like for, make properties now, mm. right? someone's like lots of properties but lots of liabilities mm. because everything's from the bank mm. right and then um, something happens like the recession and the prices stop growing and, and all of a sudden there's a financial burden on this person because mm. you know can't service mortgage payments anymore. how would you and now this person is feeling a bit down mm. right uh and you know the bank's calling him saying when, when's the next payment coming through how would you say take the example and go? How do we? How would we? That was, how should that person look at things? Well, he might want to re-examine, re say, look back when he was a young man. He said when he started this journey of accumulating these things and say there was a certain expectation that if I have these 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 things, I would be happier, and all those things. I looked at the positive side of things. Only good will happen. And that was up and there's a down I didn't factor the down part of it now this one is hitting me also because that was my illusion was everything is going to be always good and good and good no nothing goes in a straight line everything goes up and down the pendulum swings this way and that way most of the things are not in my control maybe as a young man I thought I'm in total control but here you see the government's policies 
the global recession, COVID comes. So many variables are in the equation and I don't have the full control of the output of that equation which is happening in front of me. Then you realize I'm not as powerful, as confident as as I, as I imagine myself to be. Yes. Now that's an disillusionment, isn't it? Yes. The reality is hitting you what you really are. Yes. It's giving you the feedback where what you really are. Okay. So in so it's all about going back and reflecting. Each one will do their own thing. And somebody will say, Okay, I understand that this recession has hit me now. And I still have some time in life to do something about it. Mm -hmm. What do I learn out of this? I learned that all these things doesn't make me double, triple, four times happy as my income, my finances become. On the other end, it brings me worries, tension, insurance, people, and all those type of things. I can't sleep properly. Always anxiety, tension building. I, all those things are there. Is this what I want? Is this my sense of happiness? That I said, no, no, it's not. I'm going to do something about it now. So life is trying to steer me in a direction to look at this way. And I'm going to take this opportunity to zoom out, reflect, retrospect about how I thought before and say, what were the problems in my thinking, in my design and plans there, what life is teaching me, and then re-engineer my plan and be a wiser person. So I'm, I've become a learner, not complaining about external situations and hoping that that will get restored and I will continue the same thing again, which is what happened in COVID time. You know, everyone just put everything on a pause button and just waiting and waiting and waiting until uh, things get got normal and then they're back on the same track again. It reminds me of a Western movie. Yeah. Some some cowboy comes into the town, he's shooting out in the street and everyone runs inside the house and looks through the window. Is he still there? Is he still there? If he is gone, then we'll go back to our normal thing. So during COVID times, I was thinking like that. It's still there. And then we are locked in, see? When it has gone, then we are back to that. That means we haven't learned anything from that experience. And that's it. How many people made a transformation out of that, that global experience of COVID and said, I reflected on life, that mad race that was going on. I didn't have time to think, but I was forced to do that and as a result I have changed myself about what I want to achieve out of the rest of my life if something like that happened that COVID was a great teacher if it did not happen well we were not good students yes so changes challenges will come maybe I, I can illustrate this in the next session with a, a example a story yes. stories are good to remember yes. okay We'll take that up again in the next one. That's right. So we are, yeah, we are out of time now. Um, thank you, Samiji. That was um, very enlightening. Uh, and we would like to carry on at our next session. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Being in balance. Rhythm. For more information, please visit www.vedanta.nz. Thank you.